Biology is the study of life in living organisms. Life, while a little hard to define, is generally considered that which undergoes metabolism, grows, and reproduces. A cell is the basic functional unit of life. An organism is a continuous living system. DNA is short for deroxyribonucleic acid. DNA is the information storage device of a cell, and it is a digitally encoded information storage system. Despite the fact that the cell is the basic functional unit of life, it is still a complex, organized system of information, structure, molecular machines, and much more. Each cell has a level of complexity similar to that of a city, but with more organization. In fact, the simplest living cell is more complex and organized than any man-made machine. Single-celled life consists of organisms made up of only one cell. Some are bacteria, some are single-celled animals, some are single-celled plants, such as blue-green algae. Multicellular life consists of organisms consisting of multiple cells, usually billions. They include plants, animals, and people. In reality, there are only two possible origins for life a naturalistic origin, also called abiogenesis, and life being supernaturally, intelligently designed. All other suggestions don't actually solve the problem, but just move it to another place in the universe. Abiogenesis has to overcome the humongous gap in organized complexity between a living cell and its chemical constituents. And no natural process demonstrated to exist can accomplish this task. In fact, known natural processes show that it cannot happen. Going from non-living chemicals to a living cell requires a huge decrease in entropy. Now, statistical thermodynamics shows that natural processes tend to go towards increased entropy. And that's the opposite direction of what is needed for abiogenesis. Now, it is true that adding energy can decrease entropy, but only if the energy is applied in a sufficiently organized manner. And no known natural process can apply energy in a sufficiently organized manner, suggesting that abiogenesis is impossible. This leaves as the only viable possibility the idea that life was supernaturally, intelligently designed. Now, it is known that intelligence can create complex, organized systems. After all, humans do so. It is also known that intelligence can encode a functioning genome. Human scientists have done this. Intelligence has a sufficient degree of organized complexity to create a living cell. The intelligence that started life in the universe would have to be from outside of it, and thus would be, by definition, supernatural. Evolutionists will claim that evolution is just change over time in inherited traits found in a population of individuals. If this were all that was really meant by evolution, there would be no issue. Because creationists agree that there is change over time in the inherited traits of a population. The real dispute is with the idea that these variations can start with one cell and produce all life on Earth, including man. Going from microbe to man requires adding a lot of information by nothing more than mutations and natural selection. The evolutionist argument is that, given enough time, mutations and natural selection can produce anything. However, such a large degree of change has never actually been observed. But it is a necessary assumption for a totally naturalistic origin of current living systems. 